In this video, I am going to add air conditioning refrigerant into a mobile AC system. In other words, an air conditioning system in the vehicle. Uh, a couple of things I'm going to say about this. Firstly, the system I'm going to add this refrigerant into is empty. There was a leak. So if you have to drain the system, that uh, is something that uh, you're going to have to check into local bylaws. Maybe you might not want to get involved in that uh, because that's a whole other scenario. Now this kit has refriger refrigerant here. There's a can of sealer. Uh, I bought the kit with the sealer in it. I figure if there's any leaks, especially considering that uh, I had to replace a damaged piece of hose that I'm going to, I bought the kit with the sealant and you got your gauge that we're going to use in the process so uh, most important thing here is this is just the video of what I'm going to do using this kit you are going to want to read the instructions carefully for whatever kit uh, you purchase and go by that you're going to want to follow the manufacturers instructions basically so in this vehicle we have our two uh, ports go into the AC compressor the low side port is marked L with this cap on it here that just unscrews the low side port is generally the larger one you're going to want to reference your vehicle maintenance manual if you're doing this yourself but uh, we can see here that the low pressure port has got the larger pipe and the high side here which also just unscrews is on the it's a little tighter than I thought it's on the smaller pipe so the idea here is we have this unit and there's our can of refrigerant and the can of refrigerant as you can see is sealed on the top so what happens here is we take this end and that's going to screw onto the can and then once we get it on there I'm going to turn this and maybe you'll see there's a pin that will extend out you may see that coming out there of this valve and it's going to pierce the top of the can and allow the refrigerant out into the cooling system through this end which is going to connect onto the low side port so I'm going to retract this pin turning this valve counterclockwise like so making sure that it's fully retracted which it is and then I'm gonna screw that onto the top of the can the refriger refrigerant can like that and then once I get that on there now as I say you're going to want to read the instructions for whatever particular refrigerant you have bought. So I'm just following this step by step. So now that I've got the can connected to the unit, but we haven't pierced the top of the refrigerant yet. So on the unit I have here, this is the connector that is going to go on to the low side port and if you'll watch as I pull this blue part back with my fingers here it moves up and down that's to release it now as I say you're gonna wanna read the instructions for your particular device but this generally is how they'll go now I'm gonna remove the cap on the low side here take that off set that aside Hopefully I'll do this without knocking my camera off the tripod here. I'm going to put my hand underneath the pipe. This isn't particularly strong and it's not all that well supported in the uh, engine compartment here. So now, those little balls that lock the unit into place there are going to go on this groove. So it's going to go down fairly far. You'll notice that this is going to go down fairly far on the low side port. So if I just place it there, kind of move it around, make sure it's 
not on an angle or anything, holding some pressure on the pipe and then just push that down. I heard a click there. That should lock in. Now, <clears throat> just to make sure it is, I'm going to turn it. I'm turning that and I'm trying to pull it out this way at the same time. And we can see that that is properly locked on there. Now to release it, you just pull the blue unit up and there it is, it comes off. Now put it back on. So there we have it, connected to the low side port. So here's our gauge. Remember we didn't have to drain this system because there was a leak in it and there is no coolant in the system and that's why if we look here we have zero PSI. There's no pressure in the system. Now I'm going to turn this can upside down like so. Hopefully we can see what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to turn the valve and that's going to puncture the can. So looking at it from the top to puncture it I'm going to turn it clockwise and for this unit <clears throat> as per the instructions to keep the can inverted and there that's as far as that'll go so it's punctured the can so now that we punctured the can by turning it clockwise we're now going to turn this counterclockwise and that'll pull the pin back up out of the can and release the refrigerant from the can into the hose and into the system. Uh, just a little note here too, on this unit I have, right here, there's a, a little screw to tighten that up. So looking at it from this direction, tighten that up, righty tighty. So. Now I'm gonna I want <clears throat> I want to keep this can upside down, but just to show you here. So now uh, we're gonna start doing it counterclockwise. Okay, so then we keep turning counterclockwise. At this point, the refrigerant you can actually hear it. It's gonna start coming out of the can and going into the AC system via that low side port and I can't move this too much but we can actually see our pressure gauge going up there so the instructions tell me to wait 10 minutes while the refrigerant goes into the system and it also mentions that the pressure may be in excess of 50 psi at this time because the system is not actually running the compressor is not running in the vehicle and taking the uh, refriger refrigerant through the system and we can actually see here there's the 45 mark by the end of my finger there and this is 65 there so they're right it is in excess of 50 psi so as per my instructions I have waited over 10 minutes and According to the instructions, after the system stabilizes, the pressure should be in excess of, I believe it said 50 psi, and we're up over 65. So now, at this point, we're going to leave the can inverted, and we're going to have to start the vehicle. So you're going to want to make sure that this can is away from any moving parts. I've tie wrapped it to another part there. So you absolutely have to make sure that there's no moving parts going to hit that can. Okay, so we note that the pressure reading there now is about 30 PSI. The instructions told me to start the vehicle engine, put the AC on its highest setting, on recirculate, and put the blower to its low set and then to uh, check the pressure and that the 
pressure should be in the blue area of the gauge between 25 and 45 PSI, and we see that that's where it is. It's up at the high end, uh, just under 45 PSI. The engine just uh, idled a little higher. That was the air compressor kicking in. Wait for a second. You'll hear the engine uh, idle lower. That's the Air, the uh, air conditioning compressor cutting in. here too. I'm just making this video for illustration purposes. If you're ever around uh, an engine and it's running, you want to be very careful. You don't want to get your hands in around anything. You might have long sleeve uh, shirt on or something. A uh, shirt that gets caught in the belts, drag your hand in. So you uh, don't want to be doing it. So the compressor is running right now. You see the, uh, when the compressor kicks in, that's the pressure in the uh, low side port actually decreases. And when the compressor is off, as it is now, the air compressor is not running right now, and the pressure goes up on our gate. So now the instructions tell me to close the valve on the can. Once the compressor has kicked in, in other words, the air compressor is turned on. I'm going to close the valve before it shuts off again. I don't know how critical this is, timing-wise, but I'll follow that. So I got my hand there. We hear the engine has just increased its idle because the air compressor just kicked in, and I'm turning off there. So the air compressor just kicked out there, turned off. And I got this can just about closed anyway. Yeah, it's closed. And again, my instructions tell me that the pressure reading should be in the blue range now at this point, and it is. So now I'm going to remove the connection from the low side port. Again, pulling up on the blue portion of this. Off she goes. Point this can away from myself. And dispose of that in accordance with local regulations. And I wish I could show this in the video. I should have got maybe a temperature gauge or something, but it's nice and cold in here and the AC is working good. So now my instructions advise me to take the vehicle for a 15 minute road test, which I will do. Uh, again, read your instructions carefully. If they recommend that it's done by a trained professional, then follow your instructions and pay attention to that. Thanks for watching this video.